Hi folks, I'm Anthony from imaging.anthonyantonio.com. Today I wanted a quick chat about camera choice. Um, I don't do in-depth reviews, I don't go shooting up walls and magnifying things to 500% and looking for stray hairs and blah 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 blah. I look at things as how they would be used in the real world to take images. Do you like those images? Do people like the images that you take? Okay, um, now I've got two different types of camera here from Nikon. Um, my old, first one is my older D300S. Had this for a long time, got two of these. I love this camera. This is a pro body, aluminium frame. It is substantial, it's built like a tank. It goes on and on and on. I've been everywhere with this. It's very, very good. It's my go-to camera for events, weddings. Um, I've used this several times for, for all different things. Um, in fact, for weddings, I prefer this uh, to the D700. Um, although the D700 has image quality that is second to none, even to this day with its 12 megapixels, its color rendition, its saturation is, is incredible. It really is a legend of a camera, but it only takes one memory card. You cannot go to a once in a lifetime event, take images with one memory card. If it corrupts, you're in deep trouble. This has two. Uh, it takes a compact flash and an SD card. So I'm covered. My images are being mirrored on both, on both cards. So this does do video, but it's not very good. Uh, it's, uh, it's early. This came out uh, at the era with, with the D90, which was the first DSLR to actually have video. Uh, it was 720, but it's not brilliant, so I never use it. Um, but I use this purely for taking photos. Um, I've taken it everywhere. Now, one thing I like about the D300 and the D700, they have the Nikon Professional uh, Control Layout. With, a, with the mode button here, it's very, very easy to change everything, very easy. And the, the layouts are similar on all the professional cameras, which is this, the newer D500, the D700, the D800, 810, 850, D4, D5. They all have the professional uh, control layout, which is brilliant. Now, this, the D7200, legend of a camera. It's been out a couple of years now. 24 megapixels. This still probably is the highest quality crop sensor image that's available. It is incredible. Has no anti-alias filter, so the image images have a sharpness that is second to none. Um, it's very well built. It's not the type of build of the D300S, but it's still very, very, very good quality. It's a slightly smaller body than the D300. It doesn't feel as substantial, but it is very good. Now, the D7200 has the prosumer control layout. Now, although it's still pretty good, um, it's a bit more fiddly than the professional one, and more importantly, it's different. So, if I were, say, to go to a wedding, I would not take this camera and that camera, because if I'm switching cameras, I'm going to be confused at a crucial moment where everything is. I need to have the same control layout on both bodies. Um, this ma matches with my D750, which also has the prosumer control layout. And although it's good, I prefer the professional layout. Now, when the D70 was announced, uh, or even before it was announced, when it was rumoured, we were hoping it would be a replacement for the D700, but it wasn't. D700 is built like a tank, almost identical to the D300S, just slightly fraction bigger. Um, it really is a tank. It has the professional control layout. Uh, whereas the D750 uh, has the prosumer control layout. It has a maximum shutter speed of 1 4,000th, not 1 8,000th. And while that may sound extreme, you'll be surprised how often on a bright day, when you have a fast lens, like a 1.4 lens, you need to go up to that 1 8,000th just to be able to get anywhere near 1.4 or 1.8 or 2. Um, so, yeah, that is a big thing. 
flash sync speed is a bit lower, but um, the D7200 and the D750 have fantastic IQ, they have fantastic video output, they both have flat profile, uh, they both have very high quality video, but talking of video, why am I not filming the video on this? I'm actually filming this video on my Nikon V1, which I've had for a long time. Overpriced, but very well built, one inch sensor, not the best in very low light, but pound for pound, it actually, for, compared to sensor size, is fantastic. But for video, for what I'm doing now, this is brilliant. Because with a DSLR, when you're taking video, you, to go, you have to go into live mode, which means the mirror goes up. You switch from contrast detection focusing to phase detection. And on the Nikons, phase detection focusing is just too slow. It's jittery. It doesn't know what it's doing. It's hunting. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And no matter how good the quality of the video is, if it's not in focus, it's no good. Now, if I'm out and I'm taking, uh, taking a video for my own purposes and I'm behind the camera, yes, I will use this with an image stabilized lens, I will, you know, with my variable uh, neutral density filter and I get incredible video. Okay, it's not 4K, I haven't moved up to that yet, I think it's a bit early for me, I can't justify the jump in cost, and certainly for videos of me talking, talking nonsense and waffling away, you really don't need any detail than what there is because there is absolutely no need to see this ugly mug in even greater detail than what you're seeing it already. So the point I'm trying to make is that even with this older camera, this is fantastic. Megapixels, 12 megapixels is enough. It is more than enough. 12 megapixels, you can make big poster prints to go on your wall. You can do anything that you want with. It's not about megapixels. Um, people often think, well, maybe I want to build, uh, I want to print a billboard. You'd be surprised. I'll put a link to a video down below. You'd be surprised how few megapixels you actually need for a billboard because they are seen from so far away. It's not about that. Get what you need. Don't, don't be swept along with YouTube review hysteria thinking that you have to buy, you have to buy this or that. There's a difference with the cameras that you want and there's a difference with what you need. I still have my Nikon D70S. This is my first Nikon DSLR. I've always been with Nikon all the way back to my Nikon FM in the early 80s and I still have my F3. Always been a Nikon fan. My first Nikon DSLR. I love it. It's only six megapixels. Sometimes if I'm gonna go out, walk about uh, with just a small lens, small prime lens, I'll take that because the body's worth less than 100 pounds. Does have sentimental value being my first, but it's not that valuable, it's not a highly sought after camera, and I can get fantastic images. Yes, I wouldn't push the ISO as much as I would do on these cameras, doesn't really matter to me, it's fine. Uh, there's always a way, but it can do the job. And with the exception of the fact that it only takes one memory card, let's leave that to the side, all things aside, if I needed to, and I had a couple of D70Ss, I'd photograph a wedding with it, and you know what, the people would be happy. The only people that wouldn't be happy would be other photographers on YouTube. Yeah, you can't magnify it to five million percent and see the hair on that person's eyebrow, blah, blah, blah. Nah, you know what? It's not that long ago, professional photographers were shooting with six, eight megapixels and the customers were happy. And those photographs that are hanging on people's walls still that were printed from six or eight megapixels, they're still as good today as they were 10 or 12 years ago not just about megapixels. Like I've always said, bear this in mind. Photography is not about an expensive body. It is not about the latest gear. Photography is light, creativity, lens, camera. Camera comes last. Thank you very much. Visit my website, imaging.antoniantonio.com. There's a link below. Bye.